Welcome back to A Fresh Perspective with Jeff Charles. And uh, we're going to be talking about something very, very interesting, something very important. But before we get into everything, um, remember to like and share and subscribe to this podcast. Uh, leave me a five-star rating on whatever podcast app, app that you're using, especially if you're using Apple Podcasts. Please give me a five-star rating. And also be sure to give me a review. It's only a few sentences. Remember, I'm a writer. I write thousands of words each day. I'm not even asking you to do that. Just a couple sentences telling people why you love this podcast so much. But anyway, I want to bring on my guest, uh, Mr. Dan Morinoff, who is the executive director of the American Civil Rights Project. And there was a story that I came across today, and I wrote about it for uh, Liberty Nation. And... And what is interesting about it, it was an article in Politico, and it basically said that Mayor Eric Adams, you know, the guy who we all had these big hopes for as far as law and order goes, uh, said that he is requesting pictures of people who are applying for jobs with the city, potential candidates. And that already set up some red flags, right? So we're going to talk to Mr. Dan Mornoff. Welcome to the program, Dan. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. Good. And before we get anything, why don't you just give a little quick synopsis of who you are and what you do? Right. So I run the American Civil Rights Project. Uh, we are a public interest law firm that uh, seeks to assure that all Americans' shared civil rights are equally protected. Uh, often that means that we are brought into conflict with people who have their own visions of what you know, the, uh, the euphemisms they prefer vary from racial justice to uh, e to um, diversity, equity and inclusion and others. But you know, we're often in conflict with them standing up for the, the central precept of American law that everybody gets the same protections and must be treated the same. Sure. Gotcha. I mean, I, I've interviewed you on my podcast before, so we talked a little bit a little bit about what you do. And um, when I saw this article, you were one of the first people that I thought of. I was like, I got to see Dan things about this. So I sent you the article and, um, you know, the same thing, same thing. You, you, you know that Erica Adams wants pictures of potential hires. What was your initial reaction when you read that article? So I'll tell you, let me jump at this one first. I, I think it's shocking that for the New York City government, apparently there were multiple sources, apparently multiple anonymous, but uh, allegedly, and Politico is usually pretty good about how it identifies people, yeah. uh, multiple high ranking current and former uh, participants in the city government all saying, yeah, this is real. And we all know what it means. Like, uh, what was the quote? fairly early on in the article that everyone knew uh, what it was. There was no question. Mm -hmm. It was the first thing everybody said, we're going to start counting complexions now. That's the kind of admission, which if they're telling a reporter, they're gonna tell uh, under subpoena. And it's the kind of thing that, that, um, that immediately caught my attention. There were also just the handful of even obviously to the eyes of the political reporter, insane contentions about the status of American law that were then advanced elsewhere in the piece. Right. So <laughs> wait, let me let me go back here because th this was so crazy. Now, Eric Adams, now when he was asked about this and when members of his office were asked about right. this, they claim that they want these pictures because they want him to be able to put faces to names. You know, it's a city of 30,000 employees or what have you. 330,000 municipal employees. He wants to see the pictures of all of them so he can recognize their names. Sure. That's, yeah, I, again, that's my question. Are you even buying this? I mean, no, of course not. That's a ridiculous contention. And it's a ridiculous contention for a number of reasons. I mean, one, just the sheer scope of this enterprise makes it laughable. Um, second, um, that might be a reason for you to have something like, and I think the, the author mentioned this, to have a, a city Facebook of some kind for employees. It's right. not a reason to ask applicants to be submitting their pictures. Yeah, it, yeah, it really is. And see, and that's the thing. It's like, because if they were, if they're asking for pictures of already existing employees, okay, fine. But they're yeah. not. They're only asking for people no. who are applying. Right. So, well, well, before I even get into what this lawyer said, <clears throat> what, yeah. how, how do you approach this? Like, like what, what? I, mean, I think it's kind of common sense where they're going wrong here. But why don't you just kind of lay it out anyway? Like, well, what, what, what is the the problem here? Yeah. Um, 
So there are tiers. There are at least three levels of governments that all have laws under which this is illegal. Um, so, you know, it's often the case that when you've got a lawyer, we know best federal law when you're jumping between states because federal law is the same wherever you are. Um, the article itself mentions that the EEOC expressly says you cannot ask for a picture during an interview process. You can only do so after you've hired someone. Well, okay. I mean, um, the EEOC doesn't actually have rulemaking authority, but they do have enforcement authority. And that means something that they tell you that. Uh, of course, there's also actually a law that they're enforcing. Um, so let me introduce you to my good friend, Title VII, which makes it illegal to uh, discriminate in hiring, firing, failing to hire, uh, the promotions, all of the attendant elements of employment mm -hmm. uh, to discriminate on the basis of um, race, uh, race, sex. Um, you know, there's a, a longer list. It also includes uh, religion. Uh, it, but I mean, Title Seven is very clear on this subject. You cannot do this. So that like, if there's any reason, sorry, I shouldn't say any reason. If the reason they're doing this is because they're discriminating on the basis of complexions, as multiple insiders say right. they understand this right. to mean, uh, then yeah, that's that's a flagrant violation of longstanding federal law. Um, I, that might be a place to start. You also have uh, New York has one of the nation's uh, most aggressive anti-discrimination statutes at the state level. They call it the the New York Human Rights Law. I'm happy to tell you what it says, but it is very clear. It applies, by the way, not just in an employment context, but in any contracting com context. Uh, of course, any any employment contract is definitionally a contract. So, right. you know, that doesn't right. move the bar here, but it applies in both. Uh, and not only does the state have that law, not only does the federal government have that law, New York City has its own ordinance saying the same thing. So, I mean, I, it's it's remarkable that anyone would contend that there's a diversity out which allows intentional discrimination on these bases when none of these statutes say anything of the sort. Gotcha. So in the article, uh, and I'm going to read this quote to you. I know you already read it, but I'm going to read this quote for the audience. Um, there was a New York lawyer that said that what Eric Adams is doing may not necessarily be illegal. And she, and again, she's a lawyer. And she said, quote, if a company called me and said, hey, listen, we really want to increase the diversity at our company, especially at senior levels. Do you think it would help us if we used photos in order to increase it? I don't see how that would be a problem if it actually helped. And then she said, quote, <laughs> they're entitled to take steps to try to fulfill that diversity goal, providing that in doing that they are not running afoul of the existing law. So, right. So this yeah, tells so you a handful of things. She also purports to be an employment law specialist, which, um, you know, I, Okay, uh, you know, bill, bill yourself and advertise how you please, and I guess you might have your own issues with your own state bar as to whether that is a uh, factual statement of specialization. But um, mm. but for our purposes, look, she does provide that tag at the end, providing in doing so, in doing that, <laughs> they're not running afoul of existing law. Uh, they're running afoul of existing law and lots of it right I, I, I mm, yeah and the idea the idea that as long as they said it was for diversity it's all right let's just talk about federal law for a minute i, I do want to share with you some of the specific language of the new york State yeah yeah definitely law, but, but just on the federal level um there are a lot of cases under title seven VII. title seven's been on the books for 65 years 67 mm -hmm. years 68 years i haven't done the math in a while it's something like that right it's not it's um yeah, it's 64. So, sorry, math is slowing me down here in a way that does That's not right. I'm, I'm, this I'm, 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 I, I, need case, a I need a calculator for that. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me. In any case, there are a lot of cases. And some of those cases do, in fact, say things like um, did allow, despite the express language of Title VII, uh, race-based decision-making in hiring. When, um, when a company is addressing a uh, 
a disparity in its workforce that was expressly a result of its own past racial discrimination. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, when you were talking about the Jim Crow South, I think it was a power company in North Carolina, and they had had for generations a policy that there were whole categories of hiring that they did not allow Black people to apply for and would not consider them for. Were they allowed to do something to address the fact that that had resulted in a workforce in which 100% of the people at those levels were all white? And the answer was, according to the Supreme Court, yes. Yes, you could to address your own prior history of intentional discrimination as Mm -hmm. long as there was a fixed end date for the policy uh, and the goal was only to bring you into having By the way, the measuring stick was not for the whole population. The measuring stick was for uh, the portions of the population that would be qualified for the position. And there's a lot more detail you can get into. Right, right. We don't need any of that detail here because none of it applies in New York. There is no history, at least no recent history of the city of New York intentionally discriminating against anyone in hiring. So you can't have a policy to rectify the results of a recent history of intentional discrimination where there is no such history. None of this applies. And you'll notice none of it said anything about diversity. Diversity is an import to this whole area of law, or they're trying to import it to this area of law. Right, it has right. nothing to do with this. Diversity was something made up in the Bakke decision about college admissions. And the Supreme Court's reviewing that now. That's fully briefed and in front of them on the hard Harvard UNC cases, they may very well uh, change their interpretation of existing law. Until they do change that interpretation, though, they have been extremely clear that their precedents on allowing racial discrimination in admissions to higher education have no application to K through 12 education and Mm -hmm. no application anywhere else. This is something exclusively about the purported benefits of the purported educational benefits to a student body of being surrounded by diverse peers. Uh, You may have views of those claims. I certainly have views of those claims. Mm -hmm. But again, we don't need to worry about those claims because we know it has nothing to do with employment law. So it, it doesn't help. They can't do this under federal law. And then we get into state law. Now, I, mm-hmm. I it would be hard to overstate how clear New York has made its law on this subject. Like, um, there is an article of the, forgive me, there is an article of the New York human rights law, which reads, the state has the responsibility to act to assure that every individual within the state is afforded an equal opportunity to enjoy a full and productive life, and that the failure to provide such equal opportunity, whether because of discrimination, prejudice, intolerance, the list goes on for quite a while, menaces the institutions and foundations of a free democratic state and threatens the peace, order, health, safety, and general welfare of the state and its inhabitants. It continues to define as the first example uh, that the opportunity to obtain employment without discrimination because of age, race, creed, color, national origin, sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression, military status, sex, marital status, or disability is hereby recognized and declared to be a civil right. Then we get into what's actually barred in order to enforce that right. Mm -hmm. And number one, the first unlawful discriminatory practice is for an employer because of an individual's age, race, creed, color, national origin, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, military status, sex, disability, predisposing genetic characteristics, familial status, marital status, status as a victim of domestic violence. Wow, that's pretty extensive. (laughs) It is, it's a huge list. To refuse to hire or employ or to bar or to discharge from employment such individual or to discriminate against such individual in compensation or in terms, conditions, or privileges of employment. And again, like, I don't think that that left, either of those left any gray area, but apparently the legislature did. So we have this great third provision Okay, Uh, stating that 
the provisions of this article shall be construed liberally for the accomplishment of the remedial purposes thereof, regardless of whether federal civil rights laws, including those laws with provisions worded comparably to the provisions of this article, have been so construed. Exceptions to and exemptions from the provisions of this article shall be construed narrowly in order to maximize deterrence of discriminatory conduct. I genuinely don't see how anyone could look at that collection of laws and say, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, as long as it works, go ahead. That's that's difficult to fathom. If I'm a client and I see my lawyer saying something like that in the press, they're not my lawyer anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I bet. I bet. Um, and it, by the way, just so you know, I'm not going to bother you with all the language of the city ordinance that parallels this. It's the same, but more draconian. Like, right. uh, and the the courts of New York have been very clear. It's the same, but more demanding. So the idea that the city government of New York is violating its own ordinance, which is more draconian than that, mm -hmm. uh, set by its state of which it's a subdivision. Uh, and in flagrant violation of federal law is um, the kind of thing that draws one's attention. I hope that there are individuals applying for jobs across New York, the city, um, who feel like they should reach out maybe to a plaintiff's lawyer or maybe to a public interest law firm that would love to sue the city of New York about this because it's cartoon level illegality. <laughs> Okay, so let me ask you this. I want to go back to something that you said earlier, I and mean, I want to make sure that I got it right. So you mentioned that the law does allow for a company or an entity if they acknowledge or find that they did engage in racist hiring practices, they are allowed to rectify what they did, but not necessarily uh, hire based on race to promote diversity, per se. Would that, would that be correct to say? Uh, uh Right. Like, I mean, if we're talking about what is it that the Supreme Court has said um, when they dealt with this in the 1970s, um, that's that's more or less it. I mean, I, I think they were dealing with a power company in North Carolina, mm -hmm. um, which for generations had had a policy that there were whole tiers of employment for which it would not consider black applicants. Um, and it had decided at this close of Jim Crow that it was going to have this particularized program under which it would help train people working in the lower tiers of its structure uh, for their application to management, right? So, um, and, the, and there was litigation and it wound up at the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court said, look, um, I mean, one, we know that courts, when there's litigation and a company is proven to have violated the law by discriminating on the basis of race, they can be compelled to fix it, including by changing their hiring program going forward. That That's true. But even without that, that governmental intervention, that governmental compulsion, uh, in this case, uh, the court did wind up saying that, well, <laughs> um, if there's an imbalance between your workforce and the relevant sub part of the population that would be qualified for whatever level of employment. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you, that imbalance is the result of your past discrimination and you just came clean. No one sued you. You didn't lose, but you want to fix it. That the Supreme court said, yeah, you, you could do that, mm -hmm. but you'd have to do so only against a backdrop of your own past intentional discrimination and right. um, with a program designed with an end date for when you're going to stop doing this and return to the non-discrimination norm that our law generally requires, um, that within those narrow parameters, yeah, you could have a voluntary program to fix it. Though you're totally right, it still isn't about diversity. It's about fixing the harm right. from your own intentional discrimination. And as we were saying, there is no serious argument that New York has been engaged in any time right. recently in that kind of intentional discrimination. So it just simply has no bearing on these facts. So uh, what, what do you, I mean, do you think that Adams is going to get away with this? I mean, what would stop him from being able to move forward with this? Yeah. I mean, um, as with many things, um, people get away with doing illegal things until they're forced to stop. Sure. Uh, 
you should have the EEOC launching an investigation into this. Um, they could, by the way, without anyone filing a complaint. There's a thing called a commissioner's charge under which any of the individual commissioners, half of them are Republicans while half are Democrats, any commissioner can just launch an investigation. This would be a great time to do that um, since, again, we have open admissions by senior officials that this is what they're doing. They could do so. DOJ could do so. Uh, the Attorney General of New York could do so. Presumably the City Attorney of New York could do so, though they work for him. So I, I think that one's probably a whole lot less likely. Yeah. Uh, and less likely in DOJ and the uh, Attorney General of New York than something that is already shockingly unlikely. Um, but also every individual that uh, is being either, every individual who's applying for a job who doesn't get one that thinks it might have been because of this sort of um, scheme to uh, openly discriminate against them on the basis of their ethnicity, all of them have standing to bring suit under state and federal law. So uh, I hope that there are such applicants in New York, and I hope that they are reaching out to the vast world of plaintiff's lawyers who would like nothing better than to sue a city government or to their friendly neighborhood public interest law firms that will do the same. So so let me ask you this, Dan, and I know that you can't use the force yeah. and read people's minds, but why would somebody like Mayor Eric Adams do something this brazen? I mean, this is so it's it's, it's so obvious what he's doing here, like even the excuses that they gave, they know that nobody's going to buy that. Well, right. what, what do you think is motivating this? Um, I think that I want to go back to that statement by a purportedly expert lawyer. Um <laughs> There is um, there's a bubble problem here where there are people who are told so many things in their echo chamber that they just accept it mm -hmm. without really scrutinizing whether it makes the slightest bit of sense. Um, and in part because they want to believe it. So, um, look, uh, it, it would not be a new story for an elected official uh, who believes that his election uh, was the result of the support of particular communities mm -hmm. to have decided that he wants to engage in rewarding friends and punishing enemies by only hiring people from the communities that voted for him. Uh, that's been kind of illegal in America since the Grant administration. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it shouldn't be, but it is. And at least <laughs> when you're talking about race, it really is. So um, there, there's... I, I think they're doing it because they they're doing it because they want to do it and they're doing it because they think they can do it because all the people they turn to to tell them what they can do are all um I will be more polite than the metaphor I was about <laughs> to use are all um are, are all saying the same things. <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah, they're all going on along with that mentality, which the 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 echo chamber issue is a problem. But yeah, thanks for giving me your insight on this. This has been uh, awesome. But this is this is an important story because Eric Adams may not be the only mayor to do this. So, but before we sign off, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you? Please, um, we, the American Civil Rights Project, are available online at our webpage, uh, AmericanCivilRightsProject.org. I know that's very creative. Um, we're also on Twitter. We're also on Facebook. Come find us. Um, we'd love to have people know more about what we're doing. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And uh, until next Please. time. <laughs> Every time. We appreciate it.